Good afternoon. My name is Nadia Czechia and I'm a PhD fellow at the United Nations University and the Vrije Universiteit Brussel. I would like to share with you a little bit about my project, the Internet Governance Ecosystem, designing a multi-stakeholder relationship framework. In June, the UN Secretary General published a roadmap for digital cooperation, which seeks to provide an overview of the current status of Internet governance and presents action points on the road forward. Specifically, the road emphasizes to take a multi-stakeholder systems approach for cooperation and regulation that is adaptive, agile, inclusive and fit for purpose for the fast-changing digital age. So part of this report focuses on the design of a new internet governance structure, of which there was a choice of three architectures. In 2019, they reached out to the community which wanted to design the IGF Plus model. Now consultations have reopened on how to develop the structure of the IGF Plus model and the future of multi-stakeholderism in internet governance. Current teachings and understandings of the Internet Governance ecosystem is based on a very static view. In essence, it's a list of organizations and sometimes just a list of issues divided in different content areas. And where research has looked at multi-stakeholderism, it has mostly looked at the system within organizational frameworks rather than the ecosystem as a whole. So let me give you a few examples. This is a figure drawn by the Internet Society. In the middle circle, you see pie slices with themes of which some are based on entities and others are based on topics. From these pie slices are branches and they have overlaps. There is government that is mentioned three times and the Internet Society itself is mentioned twice. So it's not really clear of uh, the relationships that are happening in between each other. It just states um, how the Internet Society looks at these different organizations. Another one is the Diplo Foundation, which uses the picture building under construction. And it's their way to explain internet governance by mostly addressing baskets of topics and listing organizations that uh, want to address these issues. Also by the Diplo Foundation is the internet governance through a journey through internet governance. Here you can see the acknowledgement that themes can overlap with the topics. But if we look closer at the topic, you see at the top of the page on the yellow line, IP. If you follow that line down to voice over IP and then even further down to IPv6, the structure of this figure implies that these are different destinations on the same line, while they are very much connected. I can present the three layers of digital governance. Each layer has their own topics or even skill sets, and the actors are on the sides. The World Wide Web Foundation has a focus on the technical aspects where stakeholders are separated and so is governance interestingly. So in brief overview, what do these have in common? So we've seen that there are uh, lists of primarily themes and issues that actors and stakeholders are being kept separate and most importantly that these issues or these themes are looked from a specific perspective. So every time that we are teaching how the ecosystem is, is based on the perspective of the person that is teaching it. The internet society will then see it from an internet society perspective. The people that work in the tech sector will look at it from a very technical angle. And um, I find it very interesting that the field itself defines their ecosystem by the issues rather than by the structure in which they should be addressing. So why do we need anything beyond the models that are already there? So currently there's a working definition of the meaning of internet governance. There is no official definition. This also then results in this con confusion perhaps that every organization is presenting the ecosystem in their own perspective. With this emphasis on the issues in which stakeholders are part of the issues, um, this may become a problem for governance. And if we are looking at designing an IGF plus and creating a new structure in which we're going to do decision-making and policy-making, I think it's very important for us to really understand the stakeholders that are in play and what kind of relationship they have, what kind of overlap is there when they are addressing these particular issues. I believe that to understand how the ecosystem works, we need to understand the stakeholders, but also their relationships. Without, we design a new structure which doesn't understand each other, neither the skill sets nor the capabilities, and therefore we risk returning to siloed decision-making. Therefore, I'm exploring different modeling methodologies that could possibly address my question. Causal loop diagrams, um, stock and flow diagrams, uh, social network analysis, agent-based modeling, but also I would like to look at viable systems models as a potential follow-up on to see how the system can reorganize itself. With the causal loop 
and stock and flow diagrams um, because it addresses the core principle of systems thinking. Uh, one cannot understand an issue or its constitutive parts, so factors, actors, and processes in isolation. In a system, everything is related to everything else. The relationship the relationships and not the parts themselves drive the outcomes and behaviors we want to understand. And without understanding these relationships, and if necessary, modifying them, we cannot possibly change outcomes and behaviors in a lasting manner. However, it's not easy to identify and account for these relationships. When I'm thinking about designing an internet governance ecosystem using a causal loop or a stock and flow diagram, initially I thought this might be a really great way of understanding the issue, but that's the issue. I'm looking at actors when we're looking at the ecosystem because I want to look at structure. The whole problem that we saw with previous models was that they are all focused on the specific issues and letting an issue drive. So while it's a benefit that it shows a snapshot of all the relationship that matters and it gives a visual representation of the variables, the problem is with this methodology is it focuses on processes rather than actors specifically and it focuses on cause and effect. So perhaps this might not be the specific way forward for this specific um, exercise, but in terms of uh, taking an approach to understanding issues better and how actors are involved with them, this might be uh, a manner of engaging them. Agent-based modeling, which is a powerful simulation technique that can model each entity, such as stakeholders or, or resources, as an independent agent. The agent has characteristics such as autonomy or bounded rationality and mobility, and agents are giving a specific behavior and they interact with other agents accordingly during the simulation. So agent-based models can thus model the domain of uh, internet governance in a natural way. The resulting simulation can give insights into the functioning of the system at the macro level as a result of activities carried out at the micro level. Um, Agent-based models then can be used for exploratory purposes by exploring a theory and generating hypotheses. Another purpose of um, agent-based models could be the to act as a prediction tool that can be used for extrapolation of trends, evaluation of scenarios, and the prediction of future states. So what is really great is that it can capture dynamic behavior and also um, Creating an agent-based model will be able, we will be able to use it as a tool for future policy making and decision making to see what kind of results we could possibly get out of it if specific aspects change. However, as part of agent-based modeling, there is a concept of validation that needs to be uh, engaged with, and there have been uh, numerous concerns in, in the reason of how validation is set up and um, implemented. Then I had a look at social network analysis, which is a classic systems approach measuring complex interactions of actors at multiple levels. Network analysis is a means for understanding the complex interactions that occur among individuals and in organizations. So it helps us understand the nature of those connections, what is flowing between them. So for example, information or power or financial resources and the overall structure of all those relationships within a defined network of uh, the local actors. So these networks exist everywhere, whether it are formal or informal, intentional or unintentional. So being able to look at an ecosystem is exactly um, what this can look at. Often they naturally emerge when there is a need and a constituency. So a network is any distributed system of individuals and organizations that come together to pursue a shared purpose. So network analysis um, is so networks are structured in a different in different ways and operate through different processes emerging from their relationship driven nature. So looking at network analysis, it can provide both a visual map and a mathematical um, uh, analysis so that we can better understand these networks. And I think that's a really good benefit of looking at social network analysis for the ecosystem. Uh, because you can then calculate the network density to determine if connections happen across all the organizations or only among a few of them. So at the organization level, we can see which organizations are central or peripheral, um, even organizations in a broker or at a bridge with other organizations or just uh, clustered in small cliques. However, on the other side, um, it is really software dependent. So if you want to do social network analysis, you need to start learning programming languages such as R, or you need to learn Python. And I also know that there's another program that is often used and is, that is called Gephi. However, 
There is another program that has recently started becoming more popular within systems thinking groups, uh, and I want to have a brief look at that. It's called Kumu. And Kumu is a free software online that was designed to do systems modeling, and they have different varieties of types of systems modeling they can do. And this one is stakeholder analysis, um, in which you can also do kind of like network analysis type of things. What I really liked about it is that you don't actually need to know any coding skills. You do need to know the terminology, you need to know what you're trying to find and achieve, and of course you need to gather all the information. But once you have that information, you don't have to worry about the visualization, you don't have to worry about packages or things like that. You can just type it in. And what I liked about it, so you 